All right, everyone, we start off today talking about a mild suggestion that I happen to have. Right now, the Supreme Court appears amenable to the concept of throwing out Roe v. Wade, which is a long-term SCOTUS decision. It has precedent because it was already decided by SCOTUS in a 7-2 back in the 1970s. It's obvious that the current composition of the court, which was rebalanced by Trump so that now you have a 5-4 conservative majority. Roberts, by the way, not necessarily the most principled conservative in the world. Bush appointee, always a problem. <laughs> the Bush family, one of the biggest problems the country's ever seen, actually, until Biden showed up and decided, you know what, I'm, I'm obviously going to fail, so I'm just going to go for broke and be as bad as I can be. Uh, I think it's on purpose. I think there's malevolence. Uh, with his puppet handlers. Um, that being said, if the court's willing to do that, especially right before midterms, it's, it's at a point where it's politically not the most convenient thing to put Roe v. Wade on the chopping block and make that an issue that the Democrats can use. If you're actually going to get a decision that's more hardline constitutionalist than maybe past incarnations of the court, I think that it's about time that some states that have sane gun laws New Hampshire, Texas, etc., got together and sued the federal government to put a case before SCOTA seeking to strike down the NFA, that is the National Firearms Act, and, and other decisions and, and bills and so forth that have been passed. Um, the Second Amendment is fairly clear. I would argue that forcing people to get a tax stamp for certain classes of weapons simply because the barrel's uh, half an inch shorter or a half an inch longer or there's a certain kind of ammo, or there's a certain kind of device for like a suppressor or even a grenade launcher where you have to get a tax stamp. Um, I would argue that that's an Im impediment to the free exercise of the Second Amendment. Certain kinds, again, the same exact gun, but the barrel's half an inch shorter, all of a sudden you need a tax stamp and an additional wave of background check for it. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like the, the, the idea of a short-barreled rifle, a uh, shotgun that's been sawn off to a certain length, the idea of certain kinds of ammo being effectively banned except for law enforcement use, or at least for just for sale to individuals there. If you have a cop friend, you can get all sorts of things that you can't necessarily normally get. That, that transfer can be legal, but it's not going to be marketed directly towards you. That is, the, the manufacturers are not going to ship you out this certain model of gun because it's marked for law enforcement only. Um, sometimes this appears to be more of a suggestion, at other points it appears to be more legally binding. Um, the idea of much state-level gun control um, is also deeply worrisome. But the federal level of gun control shouldn't exist at all. You can make an, an attempt to make a constitutional argument for certain kinds of gun control at the state level. Um, however, because of prior SCOTUS decisions. I can't remember whether it's Heller DC or McDonald versus Chicago. Sometimes they get the two mixed up. I think it was McDonald versus Chicago. Um, states are fundamentally bound to the premise of the Second Amendment as well, but because of the Tenth Amendment, there are some controls that they can uh, implement uh, in a quasi-legal, at least, manner. I still oppose all gun control in the United States. I think it's unpatriotic, unhelpful, and stupid. Uh, but the federal level is clearly unconstitutional. The NFA is clearly unlawful. It should be torn apart. All you need is one state to sue the federal government, and right now in this concurrent sociopolitical climate, you'd effectively be poking the hornet's nest, but SCOTUS would probably be amenable to it. We were looking at a situation where SCOTUS is going to be in its current incarnation effectively through 2024 at least. We don't know what happens after that. We know that in the midterms, the House is going to go massively GOP. The Senate is almost certainly to flip GOP. Um, if one of the justices croaks, it is likely that they won't be able to be replaced thereafter, that, that it'll be impeded by the Republicans. So you could end up with this end, by the way, Four of the conservative, I mean, uh, four of the conservative justices are reasonably young, including all three of Trump's appointees. Um, Clarence Thomas is only 73. For SCOTUS, that's not particularly old. Just to be clear, he appears to be now effectively the boogeyman of the left wing. Anyway, if you're going to poke the Democrats on social issues or on any other issue with that judicial level of power, Roe v. Wade is way up here. Guns are down here somewhere. I would argue that if you were to literally tear apart the NFA, 
nullify federal gun control, including import bans, micro stamping, certain types of background checks, regulations on types of weapons, weapon accessories, taxes, and so forth. If you were to do that, I think it would be a good time to do it now. I don't think that now is the time to wait. I've warned Republicans and, and conservatives in general, which I'm neither, uh, but on the gun issue, I certainly would side more with them than the Democrats, that you, you have to learn how to actually, when, when you have a mandate, you have to learn how to use it. Right now, <clears throat> the Republicans only have one mandate, which is judicial. You have the Supreme Court largely on your side. You can't count on Roberts. You know how the three liberals will vote. All four of them would vote against removing the NFA. I think it'd be a 5-4 decision. But if you can get that going and whittle away at gun control in the United States, it would be a good thing. It would also help counterbalance uh, crime. Another thing, you have state-level gun control that's certainly unlawful. For example, in the state of Vermont, in order to buy certain types of weapons, you have to be 21. This is a clear impeding of the Second Amendment's free use by citizens who have attained the age of majority. They are part of the militia, namely 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. It is clearly a violation of the Constitution. Bans on expanded or high-capacity magazines, which is an arbitrary definition that different states use differently, by the way. Is it 15 rounds? Is it 10 rounds? Is it 5? Is it 20? Who knows at this point? Um, you have one of those in Vermont. It's unconstitutional, clearly. If a citizen in buttfuck Kentucky can have a 50-round drum for their tactical pistol or whatever, and a Vermonter cannot, this violates several things. It violates the Second Amendment, because clearly you're impeding the ability of the right to keep and bear arms from being properly exercised. If you're going to say that a state government can limit the magazine to 10 rounds, you're effectively saying they could limit it to weapons that don't use magazines. They could effectively ban most of the weapons that exist. They could limit it to five rounds. They could, they could limit it to two rounds, etc., etc., etc. There's an arbitrary sort of system which in some cases, like with Roe v. Wade, can be devolved to the states. Um, that is, that there is no, a literal definition of the Constitution does not explicitly include the right to have an abortion, for example. While I am pro-choice, and I do believe that abortion should remain legal, the absence within the Constitution, at least in explicit terms, allows it to be devolved to a state's issue. Individual states' courts will decide a number of cases over the coming years. With the Second Amendment, though, it is explicit. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That is, that you, have, you need a well-regulated militia. That means an able-bodied population between the age of majority and total senescence, people who are neither criminally insane nor off their rocker in some way. They're part of the militia. To be regulated effectively means to be well able to function. That requires sufficient arms. This is, of course, uh, uh, fiddled around with in the Federalist Papers and in, and in uh, various meanderings philosophically by the early founders of the United States. It's quite clear what the Second Amendment means. It has nothing to do with soldiering. It has nothing to do with regulation in the term, as the term tends to be used in modern parlance. Um, it has to do with the antiquated term. It would be basically like regulating your watch, making sure it functions. With the militia explicitly being labeled the civilian corps, um, as opposed to actual standing soldiers, which didn't even exist in the United States when it was written, as sort of nullifying the idea of, oh, so this means the well-regulated military is the right of the people. They have the right to have an armed forces. Well, it didn't exist at the time, and they would have used the term regulars or soldiers. They would not have used the term militia. The militia is the rabble, the, the people able to muster. The NFA explicitly violates the second, and arguably elements of federal and much state gun control also violate equal protection. If you were to use effectively the same argument that Roe used, and you were to conjoin that to an explicit part of the Constitution, which Roe doesn't, there again, abortion's not mentioned, the militia is, if you were to combine them together, you could effectively nullify all gun control in the United States. Again, if there's an inequality between people state to state, that would be untenable because of the explicit language of the Constitution, it's cut and dry. Now is the time for people to begin activism in order to get this going. 
You have a court that's amenable to the idea of striking down long-term precedent and really shaking things up. You haven't had a conservative majority on the court willing to do that in living memory, effectively. Go for the NFA. Go for the jugular of gun control. By the way, I would say the same thing about the drug war. The drug scheduling system makes no sense either. It's a <laughs> complete mess. Again, it's been half nullified by state and local action as well. Bring cases before the court. We can end the war on guns. We can end the war on drugs for a much brighter future for the American public. I dream of the day when the gay couple can guard their marijuana farm with mail-ordered automatic weapons. I think that that sounds like a pretty cool future. Yeah, so people will make it to talk about how to be dystopia. People be shooting each other all the time. Well, shooting people is still illegal and violates the NFA. Wink, wink. Um, the gun itself, not wielded by a person or perhaps a cybernetic device of some sort, isn't going to shoot anyone. If it does, it's an accident. The gun, you can't put the gun on trial. People use guns for terrible things and use drugs for the same purpose. I don't care if someone smokes weed, but then again, they could get a bunch of other people high by spiking the wedding cake or something like that and it'd be considered illegal. You're effectively poisoning people under statutory law. Um, yeah, get rid of the NFA. Get rid of all gun control. There shouldn't be any federal gun control. Yes, you should be able to import any weapon that you want. Yes, you should be able to make your own ammunition. You should be able to make your own gun. It shouldn't have to be registered. I mean, again, the federal gun control thing has been half nullified by things like 3D printers anyway and straw purchases. And it's just a boogeyman time after time when you look at gun crime statistics. And, of course, more people are murdered with hammers than with assault weapons. Um, it's It's... Small caliber handguns, mainly, that are doing the crime, and it happens to be drug gang related and in the inner cities, mostly. Crime has risen. By the way, <clears throat> we'll talk about that very briefly to sum that up. When they talk about, oh, there's more crime. Ergo, we need more gun control. We'll double down on the policies that actually correlate with the rise in crime. This would be very, very helpful. If we look at the rise in crime, much of it, again, it's just the, over, the inner cities and blue states being overrun with criminals. <laughs> because you've got a catch and release system. Oh, you were stealing a bunch of shit from Walmart? Well, we'll process you and turn you loose. Don't you think that the person who is willing to brazenly walk into Walmart or Target and load up the cart and just throw things around and then walk out because in San Francisco and places like that it's decriminalized, don't you think that that might be financing other forms of crime when they flip the $1,000 flat screen TV? or the bundle of laptops that they just lifted, or the tablets or something? Don't you think this might contribute to drug sales? Yeah, some addict. Uh, you know, you're not attempting to make them clean or anything. They'll probably still prosecute the poor addicts. Um, you know, steals a bunch of shit and buys a bunch of heroin. Maybe shares it with their friends. Maybe gets someone else addicted. You're contributing to a long-term uh, trend within crime. Uh, guns aren't causing it. Maybe the absence of guns is causing it. By the way, there should be no red flag laws. There should be nationwide stand your ground, nationwide castle doctrine. It should apply to your property, not just to your, your, uh, uh, your home itself. In some states, you're in your house and you're attacked, you can shoot, but if you're just on your property, you can't. Uh, it, it's very, very strange. In some states, you have a duty to retreat in most cases. You're not allowed to deploy any form of weapon unless you're already f actively fleeing and get overtaken. So in other words, you have to turn your back to the dude who may whip out a gun, and he doesn't give a shit if he uses it because he's already engaged in crime. The NFA needs to go the way of the dinosaur. Uh, gun control in the United States starts and ends with Crookshank anyway. It was a Ku Klux Klan-sponsored decision decided, uh, designed to keep uh, former slaves disarmed so that they wouldn't rise up and harm white people or you know, uh, resist the Klan or something. Well, if you want to talk about a racist uh, vestigial remnant of the 19th century, it's gun control. Yeah, I, I look at this as a form of reparations that I can get behind. That's about all. Peace out.